Thank you guys so much for joining us here in Video Studios. We are so excited. Let's get elevated. What? <laughs> you guys. Let's go. If you haven't been to Elevated to Studio, here, we are, are so company. inspired by them. They are absolutely amazing. Kind of a crypto focused, VR focused show channel. So uh, Kevin and I actually grew up together in the physical realm. About probably six months ago, we really just started diving down the rabbit hole of what a metaverse is. And uh, Horizon was just a place that was a inside the oculus we liked being inside of vr and we also um just came in here and grasped uh building worlds pretty easily i mean you can it's good for beginners and you can take it as far as you want so it, it was just a place i went out to kev's house spent a week and we put the studio together right on. that's awesome man it was just a learning process you know just coming in here and doing some of the tutorials that building offers and um, learning from there and meeting other people that knew how to build and just, you know, collaborating together. And then me and C um, got together and he flew out to LA where I live. And um, yeah, <laughs> we kind of awesome. put this whole place together. You guys are yeah, doing wonderful. I mean, and... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. We so appreciate it. did you have any experience before coming into Horizon, like building worlds? Or was this like your first experience in like creation? So as far as creating, you know, no previous coding experience, but I have previous videographer experience and video editing and things mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, going from Adobe services and trying to learn, you know, yeah. 3D modeling. And I mean, it's easier in here because you only get, you know, your primitive shapes and things like that. <laughs> so it's not like Blender or full um, 3D modeling mm -hmm. where you have to mess with nodes and things like that but i grasped the concept of building pretty simple and away we went so then we created elevated and now here we are that's interesting yeah i've got yeah. similar like adobe experience of over 10 years so similarly it was very easy nice. for me nice. to pick up but some of the scripting was a little bit harder for me to get past what blows me away is your first world doesn't feel like someone's first world and i i think Mark and i both feel the same way when we first went there it blew our minds just absolutely gorgeous and it had a lot of great tech in it just especially for first world so is that something you guys like how long did it take to build your first you know that first studio the first headquarters well i mean it was really <laughs> Pretty much all in that week I flew out to LA. We were eight hours a day in the headset. We'd go out, hike, <laughs> went to the beach, come back, go in the headset. Like, <laughs> nice. I mean, we, we really That's put sick. in a lot of time that first week and uh, we, we had some help. Uh, I think you helped out with a little bit of the tech that went on behind Choked the scenes. Them. So <laughs> got to give kudos. <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, no, we're, we're grateful for everyone that's helped out. And um, we're excited to see where it, where it goes from here, too. Yeah, that's so good. And I want to just like take a moment to say, you know, normally we save this question for the end. But what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? Because obviously you guys got a running start, did really well. Yeah, just build, man. Just go in there and play with all the features and and just like snap them snap some things together and and realize that it's not going to be perfect and the more reps you get and the more hours you spend <clears throat> building the better you're going to get so it's just it's just a matter of reps that i mean that's what it came down to for us like like c said yeah. we just came in and you know we spent <laughs> eight hours a day creating that first world for like <laughs> a week straight and so for those first yeah. two or three days it was like such a slow progress on what we built and then by day four five six you know we were throwing up boom, boom, just boom. things left and right just putting everything together yeah. so just it's just a matter of reps you know just the more you do the better you get so don't get frustrated yeah, when you just awesome. first start yeah i remember that first week even uh just being in the headset and you have that like vr vertigo like, I remember overcoming that <laughs> feeling while being out in California. <laughs> I'd say another piece of advice would just be uh, the partner that you choose or the team that you choose to work with. Uh, I know mm -hmm. Kev, Kev Motors. I mean, he, he really always has the wheels turning. And um, like I said, even the other people we've met in here, uh, our first guest was Yoda. And he's all about getting yeah. a good team put together to build something beautiful. So... Um, whether mm -hmm. it be Horizon or a project you're trying to get off the ground, your your partners make a huge difference too. You Mark. talked about uh, having Yoda as your first guest. You've had some spectacular guests. 
lined up already. How do you guys go about like choosing your who your next show is going to be and stuff? Because you've had some great topics. Thanks, and man. what, believe it or not, is the rest of the season, it just keeps getting better and better and better. <laughs> and we're so excited to <laughs> what, what we have to offer to show you. And like, we're trying to touch on all metaverse realms as far as like NFT plays, crypto plays, mm-hmm. and, and haptic gear. And, you know, we try to touch on every little piece of the metaverse. So I encourage you guys to just keep tuning in because. We're going to keep bringing new subjects in each week. But as far as guests 100%. go. Uh, yeah. So um, why Kevin and I kind of thought we'd be good partners going into Elevated and like a talk show. Like Kev mentioned, he's he's been in L.A. with the video editing. Uh, Kev's a creative. He's an artist. And in real life, I'm actually in sales and I've been in sales for years. So as far as getting guests onto the show and just speaking on stage, it's something I'm very comfortable with. And believe it or not, though, to line up the guests, just hit the DMs on Twitter (laughs) mostly and just be persistent, do good follow up, be polite. And uh, hopefully the more and more content we put out that grabs people, the better and better the guests they'll keep getting. So I I do think, though, like Kev said, uh, the rest of the season, I think it's just going to keep getting better and better. Uh, there's <laughs> going to be, I, I think, um, thank you. <laughs> I think with us, we're kind of going a different route or a little bit different niche than a lot of people in horizon. Um, with Facebook being more of just a web 2.0 company, like a closed company, uh, I I think some of our guests coming on this season are just going to open people's eyes a little bit to uh, some of the other stuff that's being worked on. Um, that's not to dis Horizon though at all because Horizon's our home and we're very open to staying in Horizon. Uh, and Zuck mm-hmm. had a great podcast last week as well talking about Facebook becoming more open. So uh, I, I just think bringing those guests on this season are going to open up um, some eyes for people and hopefully teach people as well. So cool. And just for anybody watching the video on YouTube, we will have links in the description, linking to all of your guys' socials, Twitters, YouTube, all of that. So look out for that in the description. But you guys, I, I love what your topics are. And for me as a tech enthusiast, I get it right off the bat. But for everyone else in the audience and those watching at home, what what is it that is an NFT to you guys? And even for me, I'm still kind of new to the idea of NFTs and crypto itself and how it relates to VR. I'm pretty well versed in, but just kind of a brief summary, if you will. I can touch base on just crypto's background and we'll kind of roll it into NFTs. Um, we're actually working on um, learning the process of an NFT right now and hopefully uh, Elevated has some by the end of season one. So something to look forward to as well but um and just just going into crypto a little bit uh like bitcoin ethereum they all have what's called a blockchain so uh as far as nfts go an nft is just an item on the blockchain that is yours and only yours so it, it could be something as simple as the clouds that you're sitting in let's say Lex was auctioning off nfts of each piece of his studio and the cloud seat was one of them <laughs> and you were you yeah. wanted to have a cloud seat <laughs> but let's say Lex only <laughs> made 10 of them for example well matt oculos like let's say all 10 got snagged and you two were like i really want a cloud seat <laughs> well <laughs> you're gonna have to bid and earn your way to a cloud seat so there's there's just a whole marketplace that can be created with an nft but kev i i'll go ahead and let you roll into it too even further on nfts you know there's other platforms like essentially insomnium that you know you have an avatar within that realm but as far as the clothes your avatar wears you can buy it as an nft on Mm. their marketplace so like think about it if horizon you're you're wearing uh, a polo and i'm wearing a black t-shirt and this is (laughs) this is all we're offered right you know so if yeah if um mert could come and design his own shirt on blender and then put it on the horizon marketplace and then you and i can both buy that buy that shirt that he made and then he gets some of the proceeds from that shirt being made and me and you now we we're rocking some new new cool gear so 
Merck you know, it just has a friend who makes clothing for a living and he's constantly talking about like what we're doing in Horizon to him. And like that's something we would yes. love to see is like Merck as a designer in Horizon. <laughs> if he could make the clothes, then this brand could like sponsor him, sell the products in here. I think that is the future that's yes. coming. Yeah, and it's like we're getting closer and closer, you know, with every update, honestly. It's so cool. Yeah. And exactly. touching on on this and even tying to some of the b-roll footage we shot today like we could sell that haptic suit as an nft oh yeah just tied to our episode yeah. we could do a haptic suit <laughs> drop that week when we get mm -hmm. to the point that we can crank nfts out efficiently so we have a yeah, lot of ideas just, with it's it, just a cool space cool. open open for you know every common person who wants to learn a skill that they can learn that skill and be able to make a living off of it you know you don't have to go to the mega corporations to buy all these things or work for them to be able to make a living. You know, you can make things yeah. from your home, sell it in the virtual realm. So it's just an, an even playing field and allows, you know, the little fish compete amongst the big fish. And it's just a overall fair. Um, that is super cool. Sort of game. Market if I might it. try and yeah. summarize for, uh, you know, some of the people who might not be as familiar with blockchain technology itself. So if you're mm -hmm. imagining a digital currency and like Bitcoin, for instance, we all know what a Bitcoin is. It's worth a bunch of money, right? Like that's what a Bitcoin is, but that's not actually <laughs> what a Bitcoin is. A Bitcoin is like saying you own a percentage of this coin and there's like this history that's been tracked ac across a ledger and that ledger is the blockchain. And so there's this dis decentralized um, like computers running across the world and they're all holding a copy of this ledger. And that's what the blockchain more or less is. And it's basically you mm -hmm. can then verify with each computer when a new update is made to the ledger. And so what you're doing with NFTs then is saying, okay, now we're not talking about money. We're talking about items like digital items. So recently, I think you guys probably saw they sold like the origins of HTML or whatever. Like that was recently, that yep. was huge. And that was an NFT. Yeah. And so it sounds really cool, but I'm really curious. Can you tell me a little bit more about how it would work if if you guys have the like, know how it sounds like you do? Like say um, his buddy or say we wanted to sell more than just 10 chairs. Can you just continue selling NFT chairs? Like how does that work? I mean, yeah, yeah so really you could. Like the more you put out okay, though, so like <laughs> you got to, the more, so the more chairs essentially, let's use chairs for example, the more chairs you put out, mm -hmm. the less rare they're going to be as an art form so the worth yeah. of them is probably going to go down as you go so the the smaller finite amount of chairs that you put out the more worth that they're going to weigh and that goes into the blockchain like you were talking about more so like as far as bitcoin you know there's only 21 million bitcoin and that's it there's not going to make yeah. any more they're not going to make any less and as far as the financial system that we're using now with the us dollar there's seven people <laughs> in charge of that on the board <laughs> behind the scenes kind of thing that nobody really knows. But as far as Bitcoin, there's 21 million. They're not making any more. They're not going to be any less. And everyone in the world can see um, where they're at at all times. You know, it's it's not like yeah. <laughs> the U.S. dollar, for example. So getting <laughs> on a rapid <laughs> <over>. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm oh, no, totally i get it <laughs> <laughs> me too um, yeah that's awesome but i truly hope um what Zuck talked about last week does come uh to fruition because imagine being the best at creating a certain thing within horizon and you having an insane amount of demand well, you can control your supply yeah. chain to drop X amount of them and you can reap the benefits of the skill that you're good at. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, you could, you could go both ways with it. You could drop one for everyone and just everyone buys a $5 or five, I don't know, <laughs> diem. <laughs> I guess that would be Horizon's <laughs> currency most likely. Or you can be like a Kanye West and only drop a finite small amount and everyone's like ah we all need this before they're gone and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so we'll see how it's really cool but... and i think there's something interesting about kind of like this discussion and obviously this is really future talk we're probably a year plus if not more than that out from seeing this sure. in horizon mm -hmm. but really though i think one thing that's very heavily considered is how does the 
amount and the look of Horizon change when things become very, very dispersed, right? Like Merck's a great designer. And if he sold his ice cream cones, which he's got some really good looking ice cream, I've seen them. But if he <laughs> sold those and everybody's got that ice cream in their world because it's so good and it's so cheap, that's where kind of that Kanye West exclusivity you might want to keep it like so it's not the over one cone done. But the thing is that's interesting about this to me <laughs> is there's some things that I think don't necessarily have to have that like really generic scripting for instance you know like for studios there's a lot of really cool scripts that you know we've developed you've developed that could very easily be shared with everybody for a relatively low cost and it's not a big deal because it's not going to infringe upon your studio not you not most likely <laughs> but um yeah i think this is really exciting where things are going and kind of I'm looking forward to not owning the shirt that everybody else owns. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. And yeah, that's really cool. Kev, this is something we haven't even talked about, but um, scripts in a way are kind of IP. It depends how advanced oh, yeah. they are, but I don't know if you yeah. could <laughs> sell a script as an NFT and it's your intellectual property and that's how it's distributed within Horizon. That'd be actually a really cool concept. Because ultimately, ultimately, let's say I used Lex's script um, and I import it from his world into my world. Essentially, it should be tracked that, you know, I did that. Yeah. And so it, some sort of <laughs> credit should be given back to Laix in some sort of capacity. And in all fairness of blockchain, if, if it was actually implemented and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. totally. I, yeah. And 100% I, on board. I don't know, like, for sure what's being worked on. I know there's some work being done on kind of like intellectual property in horizon right now it's kind of like everybody can import whatever worlds you give access to but i've heard rumors that there might be something coming along the lines in the future that'll be able to do something like that which would be really cool so very curious to see how that ends up being worked into horizon in the future so thinking yeah, about awesome. your guys' studio and the talks you guys have coming up um, is there any sort of like, obviously there's kind of NFTs, there's crypto talk, you have really cool tech talk coming up. You guys kind of have this kind of tech um, niche, but is there any other specific maybe season two that you're looking to continue going more niche in the crypto <laughs> NFT space? Or are you looking to just keep it open with more tech, et cetera? What was your kind of goal? This ties back to our uh, origin, I guess, really. Um, so when Kevin and I were debating on which realm to build a studio in uh horizon just had no overhead and it was simple to build in here to where now kev's putting a lot of time into learning design outside of horizon for mm -hmm. the nft space but um there are yeah. worlds out there where you can buy plots of land that appreciate over time um, we could build a studio in a whole different realm and that's where we're on the fence right now, truly. I mean, we've thought about branching, having each season in a different setting and just having mm. um, just a piece of us in each world and just kind of go around the meta as a whole. Or uh, if Horizon evolves the way we hope it does, I mean, we would gladly <laughs> stay here yeah. too. So, um, the, but yeah, that's a great question. I mean, moving forward, we want uh, our listeners to learn from us and hopefully take a piece of knowledge that they can go out and hopefully make some money in the metaverse themselves. So I think really just Kev, make you have their anything own decision, to right? Yeah. So yeah, as far not as necessarily audience, make money. Like but we yeah. want to just yeah, yeah provide education on you know Horizon, provide education on building, right? Provide education on NFTs, Decentraland, Somnium Space, all these other Streaming. metaverse things within vr or soon to be coming to vr and providing them a way to be like okay like i related to this guy the most so i think as far as crypto nft metaverse this is the path i'm going to choose you know ultimately it's yeah it's whatever our audience wants to get out of it and down the line we hope to make a community an elevated community on this whole thing and just provide Love ways that. for people to learn and provide ways to um, for us to teach and learn ourselves. So yeah, I think there's a lot in store for <laughs> Elevated. Yeah, for sure. That's, That's an thing. awesome, like quick conversation point. Like the idea that you could have every season in a different metaverse, you know, like this is Horizons, right? But there's, you know, Microsoft has theirs and there's so many others. It would be very unique. Mm -hmm. 
I think one interesting question I have for you in terms of like your audience, do you imagine your audience is going to continue to follow or do you develop like a new in-person audience and it's your online audience that continues? What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> one idea that we floated actually was uh, us in this first season educating a lot of Horizon users on this space to where if we went into a run like Decentraland and um, Botland developed a studio there, like Decentraland already has their own currency to where we could sell mm. a ticket to our show for 10 mana yeah. and all of our Horizon crew would come in and experience a whole new, uh, a whole new space and we would monetize yeah. the show at that point. But um, it would just be cool ultimate, to get everyone's feet wet in some different areas. So yeah, mm -hmm. and ultimately, you know, building into because our long term goal is to be a metaverse brand as a whole, and so like going yes. into these other realms, we we still want to remain current in the realm that we stayed in. So as far as Horizon, it, it won't be something that we're just like ah oh, no. Nah. We're done with Horizon, Decentral End. You know, it'd be <laughs> something like we'd be yeah, looking yeah. to scale and keep our presence here in Horizon. Oh yeah, and then Love add it. a presence of Decentral awesome. End. So, hundred yeah, percent. Cool. I mean, cool. with with doing things like that, it would it would require more more team, more personnel for us. And so, ultimately, yeah. the bigger, more people that we could bring in and and scale this thing to, um, educating more people and and more eyes can see it. And, I mean, that's that's the long-term goal. Yeah, and really, I think that goes both ways. Like, if we did shoot season two in a different spot, I mean, the people in that area would likely come back to check out what we have in Horizon as well, if we have that presence established yeah. here still. And so I, I really think it's just, it, it goes both ways. I mean, it's getting people just into all different spaces it's, it's i am truly excited to see how things open up and connect metaverse to metaverse be growing into that real yes. metaverse that we all envision right mm -hmm. so it's like yes. horizon is kind of like one universe and you're like hopping into the next universe hey you guys want to go to the other <laughs> yes. studio we've got a show there right now and you're like yep we're heading over and then like, you know, because yeah. crypto becomes so easy to transfer, eventually it's like, oh, my Horizon coin transfers over to what, what you guys were just talking about, right? So now I can spend a couple mono there. And I think that like that's yeah. the future that we're all dreaming of viewing and can't wait to get there with you guys. All right, Elevated, awesome. So glad to see you guys here. Great work. Um, my question is, what is your cryptocurrency of choice? And tell me why it's Dogecoin. <laughs> 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 So I think we question. I think we have a um, universal uh, kind of agreements on Top Dog, but we you know we're fans of a lot of different crypto projects that are out there. Um, but as far yeah. as crypto, I'm a big fan of uh, Matic, which is the Polygon network, which is you know its platform for a lot of the entertainment and gaming industries. So as far as um, Matic is is essentially the top of top of the hierarchy on things and then you have things like Decentraland and other various play to earn games and other metaverses that are under mm -hmm. that network so you know uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Polygon yeah. and I know C is as well yeah yeah I'm a fan of uh, Matic A because like with Ethereum and Bitcoin you have just really high fees when you go to transfer them so mm -hmm. when you're yeah. in like a metaverse realm and you go to buy a ticket for say your your fee on that is going to be next to none and it's very fast at the same time so long term nice. i think the more games that come into play matic um, is going to stay very relevant as well but great question hi what are your thoughts about uh environmental impact of cryptocurrency and as well as the chip shortage that has also mm, been caused by yes. cryptocurrency as well. As far as environmental, I would assume relating to Bitcoin and a lot of the things that Elon Musk has talked about lately, um, which is relative mostly to the things going on in China and the mining going on in China, which is mainly coal-based mining that, well, they're using coal to power the thing. So it's like, I'm not super versed on the mining aspect of things and how that is run, but... Um, there's other things called proof of work and proof of stake. And so as far as the Matic mm -hmm. network, um, it's a proof of stake thing. So it's not necessarily a mining thing and you're not using um, super computers and super chips to um, power things to add more to the circulation. So 
uh, I would encourage That's you to awesome. check out proof of work versus proof of stake because Bitcoin is um, more of a um, proof of work and a lot of these new projects are proof of stake. That brings up a good point. I will say with Bitcoin specifically, I don't know. I know Elon got a lot of backlash for kind of people were saying he was controlling and pumping and dumping. He actually held it. But um, in a way, I think <laughs> it was good that he got all that. Well, he put backlash on the crypto space for that exact reason. Um, but looking at like the Winklevoss twins and Gemini and a lot of these bigger exchanges, they are ever since that happened, they have worked towards more renewable sources for mining. So I think that's headed in the right direction. Um, the chip shortage that does tie back to uh, the point Kev brought up. Um, I 100% agree with that point as well. I mean, we're both young. We want to be able to live on earth. 50 years from now too yeah. so that's that is a great point sure. to bring up yeah i mean really i just appreciate the support so far whether you've helped us with scripting and building or just came out and attended the show um i know our social media platforms a lot of you guys uh support us follow us and leave feedback on our posts there as well so um we're gonna keep trying to pump out good content to you guys and as long as you guys keep encouraging us on, we'll we'll keep doing our thing too. If you have ideas and want um, ways to to make our content content better as a whole, please feel free to shoot us a message on either the Facebook or or the Twitter. And if you have suggestions, I know I know we've had a few people DM us on um, ways to make our show better, and we try to implement those things. So if you if you see some flaws 100%. and things that you'd want fixed and things that you could see us doing better feel free and by all means the dms are all open you know ultimately we want to put out a good product for for everyone to learn best and for everyone to have a good um understanding so if if yeah shoot us a dm if you have any suggestions for us so it's awesome thank you guys so much for joining us if you haven't already go down to the description there's links in there to all of the channels make sure to like subscribe follow do it all and we look forward to seeing you in the next one bye